Hey, everybody. Special programming note here. The end of this episode ends abruptly due to a power outage. However, we're just going to go ahead and publish it as if nothing happened. On this episode of the John 1911 podcast, are we doing an Anderson AR test? Trump goes to the NRA. The ATF likes SIG braces. Springfield Armory and Rock River Arms slit their own throats. Good morning, everybody. This is Marky and Freeze, and this is episode 61 of the John 1911 podcast. <laughs> Open your mouth, Freeze. Uh, how you doing? I'm uh, doing all right. I was just telling Freeze that we were doing an audio test, and he always sounds a lot better than me on these on these recordings because he's got that voice. Uh, it's actually just because I'm a better human being than you are. <laughs> hey, it could have been worse. You could have said better man. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, you know, hey. Whatever, hey. you know, I I don't uh, I don't I don't judge my merit on my manhood because I would generally lose. <laughs> dude, this is the wrong podcast for this conversation already, dude. Like, okay, like literally, I just watched the usage. I just watched the graph go. Episode sixty one didn't get a lot of traffic. What the hell happened? Oh, he started talking like Bruce Gender. <laughs> wow! Wow! You, you like the Bruce Ouch. gender? I, you Ow. know, look, I, I do. I, I do. I, not, we're starting over. I'm not starting with this. Good morning, everybody. This is Marky and Freeze. This is episode 61 of the John 1911 podcast. Um, I am leaving that shit in now. Um, <laughs> um, I got a question. This is an yeah. admin question because it comes up on the Facebook page, and I keep forgetting about it. I'm going to use this person's alias that we use for him so you know who i'm talking about mm -hmm. is soybean sending us an anderson ar look what's going on with this he wants to send an anderson a he's got an anderson ar it sounds like he got four or five of them yeah i don't know but he's agreed to allow us to test it because my whole thing is i like anderson's but this whole uh, RF-85, and I'm sure that's not right, but whatever treatment they give, basically the Anderson, you run them dry. You don't lube them. You don't, I mean, you run these things dry. If you lube them, it'll mess them up. And I've always wanted to- If you lube to, them, you'll mess them up? These things are, they're, they're coated with this high-tech space age treatment and you run them dry. It's that gold I mean, colored stuff, right? What's that? It's that gold colored. They're bold. No, no, no. It's just I don't, no. It's not gold colored. It's just it looks like a regular AR, but it's got this this treatment thing on it. And basically, when people screw up ARs, from what I understand, because I've never ran one, um, which is a shame because they're built right down the road from us. But um. I've never run one, but they say when most Andersons mess up, it's because people lube them. They're made to basically run dry. And I've, I've wanted to, I've wanted to run a thousand rounds through one just to see if the shit holds up. And soybean has basically offered us one. Uh, the only reason I really haven't taken them up on the offer and I appreciate the offer. Don't get me wrong. Um, the only reason I haven't taken them up on the offer is, man, you know how we are with guns. I hate to torture test someone else's gear. Well, number one, our, our regulars probably know this, but we're not really gear reviewers. And what I mean by that is, my, look, we've had people approach us um, offering us stuff, but typically... Now, I'm not going. And here's the thing: if you're someone out there and you own a company and you want to approach us to send us equipment because you want to get in front of our customers or our readers or listeners or viewers or whatever you want to call them, I'm not going to out you. If so, I mean, because again, I, I don't want you to feel like you know you call me and then I'm like, I don't want that piece of crap product, and then I tell everybody that you called me. I'm not going to do that. But our policy is: if I want your shit, I'll buy your shit because we well, want to shoot what we want to shoot. What, Look, what, what, it, what, it, is he want you to shoot this gun or 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 yeah. or torture test it? Because there's a big difference. Between no, well, the two. no, no. He doesn't want me to torture test it. But I mean, he basically, you know, he knows I'm interested in the Anderson. He has one. He's a fan. 
he's willing to send us the gun to run his, you know, to run a thousand rounds through it. I even offered, I said, Hey, run a thousand rounds through it. Do shoot some video, write an article and we'll do it. But, but he's like, well, I can send it to you and save myself 350 bucks in ammo and have you guys do it. I mean, you know, well, see, well, here's the question. See, like right there, right there. That's why I'm looking at this. I was like, I got to talk to freeze. Okay. We could shoot a thousand rounds through the gun. I mean, you know, take, um, I don't know, a month and take it out and, you know, shoot it up close, do offset, mid range, shoot it, you know, if it's got irons, I'm not going to shoot it beyond like 300 yards. I mean, I don't know if I could, I could take it out farther, but you know, work my way up to a thousand rounds through the gun. And then I don't know what do we measure test or, or, or somehow we do a before and after. Well, uh, look. analysis, or does he want us to take that gun and some gloves and hammer the crap out of that thing a thousand rounds in like you know forty minutes? Well, I mean, I don't know. I haven't really talked to him in detail because I, I just I'm look because that's become what's in style right now on the internet. I, I mean, look, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to take a thousand rounds out there and and run through it in an hour. That's no fun to me. That's just. You know, oh, that's yeah, just, I just I dislike that intensely. Yeah, I mean, I I don't want to just jam mags into a into a weapon and just run them down range. I mean, I've done that before. Hell, I did it with one of our uh, uh, VP nines when we first got it. As a matter of fact, oh, it was our dude. first VP nine. <laughs> you didn't even tell me you were going to do that. He borrowed the gun for like, hey, let me take let me take that backup VP nine. He runs out somewhere with it, and he comes back. He's like, yeah, I put like six hundred rounds through it, and like. I don't know. Like, what was it like less than an uh, hour? Four thirty minutes. I I uh, I put I uh, started the clock. I timed it for one hour. I had three mags and a mag loader and a uh, and a ammo box full of ammo. And I um, I put six hundred rounds through a VP nine with no lube. I mean, it was lubed, but I didn't lube it. I mean, what? What lube was on the gun when you handed it to me is what I ran it with. And I ran 600 rounds through that gun in one hour's time with me reloading mags. I mean, I was hammering that thing as fast as I could hammer it. And I didn't have a single flaw, not a fail to feed, not a jam, nothing. I mean, that thing ran flawlessly. Was that the backup VP9? Like that- that's, that's the back. That's okay. the matter of fact. There's probably not many more rounds through that gun than the 600 I ran through it. Yeah, I actually, just by coincidence, because I didn't know we were going to have this conversation. This gun is in my hand because it's on my desk this morning. And this gun, I'm going to tell you what. I, if I were to take this to the local FFL and list it as a used gun, they would literally list this gun as barely, like barely shot. Uh, this, like I said, I don't think it has many more rounds than what I put through it. Because I no. think maybe when you gave it to me, it, it probably had less than 50 rounds through it when you handed it to me. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, this and is... That was, that was a deciding factor of me. You know, my primary carry gun right now is a VP9, and it's because of that test. But I'm getting off this subject here. I dislike hammering weapons like that. Um not that there's not a practical purpose behind it. It's just not fun to me. Okay, so we're 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 not going to. So soybeans not sending us a gun. No, I mean, look, I really don't want to. I, look, I don't mind breaking his gun and replacing it if we need to. <laughs> um, but I just hate doing that. With I uh, look, I have no problem breaking our own stuff. We got an armory full of gear. And I have no problem breaking it and fixing it. I man, I just feel bad about. Look, I don't know how this thing is going to run. I mean, I'm not saying we're going to go out and intentionally break someone else's gear. I mean, that's not the point. But if something does go wrong with it, I, well, well, you know, we'll, we'll check this out. Like, let's say he sends a gun over, and we're like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna run it. I mean, you know, we're not gonna abuse it, but we're gonna run it and shoot it for accuracy and. You know, maybe do some drills and I don't know, maybe take it through a training cycle. Well, now, because it's not my gun, I now have to start thinking extra hard about the ammunition. Normally, like the bulk of the 5.56 five, ammo that I run through this armory is probably Wolf. I would say it's 
Now you know oh, yeah. the, the twenty. I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I, I I run a lot of wolf. I'm well, a the, big the, fan. the twenty <clears throat> is the serious ammo, but you know you spend a lot of time training with the cheap ammo, and the wolf ammo is underpowered. It's not consistent, and you know sometimes you can get you can get breech face erosion. You can get, um, uh, you know, uh underpowered almost squib like stuff and then you know we end up creating a, a kaboom and blow literally blowing up this dude's gun and i'm sitting here looking like a jackass and i'm like i gotta buy him a new gun and here's the thing it's never his gun or what i blow up blow up the upper and then i have to put a new upper on it and even though that's not a serialized part to him it's still not his gun well so you know yeah. i don't you know it's just something to th- I, yeah we're not, you know, well, I mean, look, Anderson's look, I, I, not that far from us. I guess if if we want to deal with Anderson, we could just call them. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, they're literally from my driveway. I can be in Anderson's driveway in 25 minutes. They're, they're seriously that close to me. Okay. Matter of fact, from uh, my, uh, my son-in-law's house. Mm-hmm. They're literally 10 minutes from, ah, hell, maybe not even 10. Well, with traffic, maybe 10 minutes. Yeah. You know, dealing with traffic. I mean, seriously, they're that close. I mean, we can pick one up any time. It's, I'm not a huge AR guy, so it's not been a priority. I I like the concept of the Anderson with the no lube thing, and I've always wanted to test one. And I'll probably pick one up. But look, I mean, one of the reasons, you know, I mean, I don't want to mess up someone else's gear, you know. Um, I know a lot of people that treat their guns gingerly, you know. I mean, they don't like scratches. They they like their guns to look new, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I have no problem grabbing a gun and throwing it down on a table. I don't mind scratches. I treat my gear pretty rough. I don't abuse it, but I don't baby it either now you, and you take a rifle and just climbing in and out of like the bed of a truck or up a deer stand people the average person that gets on the internet doesn't realize what it takes to keep a to take a gun and climb up a ladder hey look i mean i mean if you know you're gonna bang and you can try and here's the thing you can try really hard and i can get up and down the ladder all the time and i'm not going to bang anything but what's going to happen is at one time you're going to miscalculate or forget, and you're going to rank, you know, wang that stock into something. You're going to, you know, the upper third of that barrel ends up, you know, colliding with the the armrest or something. You know what I mean? And it just well, okay. Let me, but let me I, give I, you, but I don't, let I don't, me give you a real. I don't want to spend okay. half hour talking about this because we have a lot to talk about. Um, let me give you a real life example. You know my dad. Yeah. He's been hunting with an 870 Wingmaster for 30 years, maybe 35. And it's got one scratch in the stock. And he can tell you exactly where he got that scratch. He was actually he got scratched on a barbed wire fence he was crossing. He can tell you exactly where. He's been hunting with this gun for 35 years, and it looks like it's brand new out of the box. He babies his stuff. And he hates. He abs- like, yeah, yeah, Anyone that like, can tell you where a scratch came from 35 years ago? Dude, that's someone that like agonizes over that yeah. shit. Oh, well, he'll tell. I'll be like, "Hey, let me, let me, uh, let me borrow this gun." He'll be like, "Now you'll be careful with it." He's like, "I don't like the way you." Tra-. He'll tell me. He's like, "I don't like the way you treat guns." And by the way, he doesn't like the way you treat guns either. <laughs> hey, hey, you know what? I borrowed that revolver from him for Ed Lovett's retirement training, yeah. and he got that gun back probably cleaner than when he gave it to me. Hey, but you know what? I, and and that's fine. And I'll tell you what, Dave Spalding saw me across the range, came over and was like, oh, damn, I haven't seen one of them in a while. And I was like, yeah, they used to belong to a police chief over at this city, whatever. So, I mean, like all these old cops loved that gun. Well, yeah, because that is the Quintus. That, that particular revolver you're talking about is the quintessential cop gun. Yeah, back in the 70s. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh that, yeah. That was like you were like a detective or command oh, staff. Oh, detective, you were command staff, you know, you were a, uh, a sergeant or a lieutenant. I mean, you know, you weren't you weren't a uh you know, you, you weren't a regu- I mean, you were like up the chain. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, we we got a 
we got to talk about something because I'll be honest with you, I haven't I haven't looked into this that much. I don't know what the hell's going on, and I suspect you don't either. Uh, well, I don't know. Springfield kind of- Armory and Rock River Arms are in a complete shitstorm. Have you heard anything about this? I have not heard a single thing. Okay, here is what I think I know, and I'm going to warn the listeners. It's ten o'clock. It's we're getting late. Start late. Start ten o'clock on May third. Okay, ten in the morning. So, by the time you hear this, maybe tonight, this may be this may change. So, Rock River or Springfield Armory, don't 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 fucking send a goddamn lawyer over here because I got more lawyers than I got friends. And this is I'm just saying what's common knowledge. If you know, correct me if you need to correct me, but don't fucking send me a letter. Springfield Armory is in Illinois. Rock River Armory, RRA, they're an AR company. You may not even know who they are. Oh, uh, yeah, I know who they are. Um, they're in Illinois. They're, they're the – Les Bear, incidentally, used to be in Illinois, and he crossed over into um, Iowa to get away from it over on the other side of Illinois. So they are – I get, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what specifically this is, but apparently – a, the demo, you know, the crazy goddamn Democrats in Illinois, the communists. That's who they are. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, that's where the goddamn American communist the anarchist movement really exploded. Was in fucking Chicago, but I don't want to go there. They have passed a law or a bill. I, I'm not sure if this has become law or if this has just passed the state house or if it passed one house. But apparently, they've got some kind of limitation. If you are an FFL, you cannot. If we were a gun store in Illinois, Freeze, and we were going to sell, and Soybean lived in Illinois with us, yeah, he would be limited to only being able to buy seven guns, seven transfers in one year. Maybe it's nine transfers. Well, here's the problem. This covers FFL dealers, and it covers FFL, well, you know, like, you know, um, SOTs and manufacturers. So, Springfield Armory and Rock River Arms carved, instead of opposing this law, they yeah. worked with the Democrats, got a carve out for themselves, so they're not bound. Because you're like, if you're, you know, if you're Springfield Armory and you want to ship a bunch of guns to somebody, you have to limit it to seven, you'd go out of business. Well, sure you would. Um, so they did a carve out for themselves, so instead of, a, quote, officially opposing this law, they uh, they basically came out and said they were neutral on the law. So Ro- Springfield Army, Rock River Arms do not have to abide by this because they have an exemption. But every other FFL in the state of Illinois, it doesn't matter if you manufacture guns, it doesn't matter if you sell guns, it doesn't it, 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 like uh, the Rock Island Auction House. Yeah. I think they're in Illinois too. So, so let and me they ask have an you something. FFL, so does I, this does this mean if 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 I've got Freeze's Gun Store, I can only sell you no more than seven or nine firearms a year, or I can only sell seven or nine firearms a year? Period. I think it's per. I think it's to me a year. Okay, I mean, because, no way it could because be seven I mean, total. that'd be insane, because it, it, if I could only sell seven or nine firearms a year, I'm out of business. Well, here's the thing. It is entirely possible, because this is crazy-ass fucking Illinois, that, dude, it could be seven a year. I mean, I honestly don't know. All I know is oh, that, all these people... I mean, if that's the case, that's going to be so tied up in court, it's not going to go into effect until the litigation's over. Well, you know, we'll see, because they have the, you know, the ability to... They can't ban stuff, but they can. The, the U.S. you know the uh, courts have said you know co- governments can can regulate guns. So I mean that precedent. I hate to say it exists. Um, here's here's what's going now. Here's here's what's going on. Springfield and Rock River are getting questions about this, and these people are like, "Why does this not cover you?" Springfield and Rock, well, I think Springfield in particular is apparently like, well, we don't really know that much about it, so we don't, we didn't know, we don't know that much about it. Oh, they're playing the bullshit. Uh, well, they're- all this shit's public record, so like, if you're, you know, political action committees and and you know, nonprofit or 
taxes and giving money. So there's some kind of there's some kind of lobbying group in in Illinois, and I don't know if it's uh, I don't know if it's pro gun or anti gun. But you know, look, you got to dance with the devil where you're at. Um, so not only was I guess somebody the CEO or a C level executive from Springfield. Um, He's like, I don't know anything about this or this group or kind of how all this works. He's apparently at one point is currently or in the past was the chairman of this organization, Firearms of Illinois, something. I don't know what the hell it was. But they've got it. They've got they've tied the CEO or C-level executive from Springfield to this group that's responsible for this legislation. They've also they have because, dude, it's called Dancing with the Devil. You know, um, most people don't want to hear this in the gun community, but if you have a corporation and you're in California, like let's just let's say we were in California, yeah, and you know, let's say we were a big company, we would be giving money to both Republicans and Democrats because you have to. People don't realize this. I mean, typically, what happens is you give more money to the one you like the most and less money to the one you like the least but you you keep the doors open so you can call so you can get a motherfucker on the phone when you need to fucking talk to him about something and yeah. people don't like that they don't want to hear it and i'm not arguing whether that's right or wrong i'm just telling people the way it is so what's happening is this is now springfield in particular but rock river too they are way ass behind the curve on this from what i'm seeing so there is now a growing boycott. Remember when there was a boycott against Smith and Wesson? And remember there was a boycott against Bill Ruger or whatever, William Ruger? You know, no one needs more than 10 rounds when they did all this shit with Clinton. Yeah. Well, this Springfield, this shit is on. I mean, this thing is blowing the fuck up. And what's happening now is people are getting in all these financial records in the state of Illinois, public records, and they're seeing all the people that Springfield gives money to you know, all these crazy gun-grabbing Democrats, and everybody is bo- is trying to boycott Springfield. I mean, there's gun stores in Florida that are like, we are not carrying Springfield anymore. Every Springfield weapon that we have in our current, um, in our current uh, store, um, we are selling them at our cost, and then the money from that, because we don't want to make money off of this, we're donating it to the NRA. Now, check how bad this is, because I'm not, I don't want to list, I don't want to list these websites, but you know as well as I do, Freeze, that certain websites that are pretty prominent in the firearms community, they run a lot of commercials, Uh, you know, they run a lot of advertising, that's right, they get a lot of advertising from Springfield, Kimber, and so you get, you know, Springfield's a big advertiser, Kimber's a big aver- advertiser, I think Ruger's a big advertiser. Yeah. So what's happened is these outlets, I'm not going to name them, people can figure it out if you're interested. <laughs> oh, I can name a few off don't, the top of don't, my head. Don't, because I'm already going to get one goddamn letter, and, uh, you know, this is going to try to be the year that we don't have any lawsuits, Freeze. This is the year. Uh, this is the yeah, year. Good luck. 2017. Hey, you okay. know what? We're uh, five no, months no, no, into no, no, it. No, no. Let me let me say this. So uh, so what's happening is so NRA comes around, and you know NRA is a big release. So Springfield has, you know, Springfield's got that Saint that that AR, and I I'll tell you what, that's kind of a good looking gun. Good, some it's really good to see companies like Smith and Wesson Springfield come out with affordable quality, but they're quality guns. You know, to compete because they're trying to compete with Anderson, which incidentally, that's why you brought it up. Well, every time someone has an article or or, or almost like it's like a pseudo paid advertising, like, here's a review of this new XD bullshit gun, you know, that's got an external hammer on it or something. The comments, people are coming in. How come you guys aren't talking about them fucking over people in Illinois? How come you guys aren't talking about this? Oh, you guys, don't, oh, we're not, oh, oh, we don't do stuff that's political. Bullshit. You do stuff here in Protection Act all the time. That's political. You guys cover that shit. You guys don't want to run this fucking story or talk about it because they've given you money because advertisers and you selling out too. Dude, this story, people are, are people are, fl- are circling the fucking toilet on this thing. And it's not just Springfield and Rock River. Some of the bigger, Firearms media outlets are in trouble here because they don't know what the fuck to do. Yeah, you don't. Um, and you haven't heard any of this. 
No, I, I haven't. And you know, but what what's amazing about that? And I fucking is, knew it. That's because you, dude, you have a charm. Fight. You don't get in this fucking shit, and it's fucking wreck. Um. Yeah, well, that's okay. I mean, I wouldn't. I, I mean, you know, I wouldn't go as far as to say charmed. <laughs> I mean, <come> <laughs> Yeah. But I mean, dude, this thing is just. Well, look, there. Th- look, the bottom line is, look, from a company. Look, I'm, I'm going to play the other side of this coin. Okay, we go out of our way not to have advertisers because the same way we don't. The same reason we don't do gear reviewers. Y- y- you know, We're I don't want to have shooting guns and having fun. Exactly. I don't want to have to. I don't want to have to have. Uh, you as a sponsor and I have to lie about your garbage because it's a piece of shit, but because you're paying me, I have to, it's like guns and ammo. Everything guns and ammo writes up is awesome. Yeah. That's because the next page after the article, there's an ad. The truth is, when's the last time you read a guns and ammo magazine where they said something was total crap? The answer is you've never. Oh yeah, okay. your your micro compact forty caliber nineteen eleven copy gun is so great. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like I mean, really, but look, look, look. Here's the thing: you got these companies that are in bed with these these guys because they're giving them money. They're advertisers, and and that's fine. Uh, you know, they, there's nothing wrong with that. They're making money, but all of a sudden, your advertiser, the person giving you money, basically sucked a big fucking dick. And you have to deal with that, mm-hmm. you know, There's, but you, yeah. you can't sit there and criticize them because they're giving you money. But on the other hand, you don't want to be you don't want to look like the jackass because they're giving you money. I mean, yeah, you have to have some integrity. You know, look, this is this is not related to this subject or not related I mean, to the gun business. But this is this is a lesson I learned a long time ago from living a, uh, you know, working on the edge of society and living, living, you know, I mean, living in a world where I'm tell you what I love. I love life today. One of the keys to happiness in life is the ability to look someone in the eye and say, "No, you're not judging them. You're not. You're not hurting them. You're not. You're not. You're not uh, saying it with malice. You just have to be able to say no. <clears throat> say no." Now, yes. I mean, okay, look, I, I see you guys. We have these stories, and we're run. This one website in particular has got Springfield story, Springfield story, Springfield story, because there's this big, this big release. You know, they're doing with Rob mm-hmm. Latham and all this stuff, and yep. it's a little bullshit gun. And they're just getting hammered. Well, I mean, honestly, uh, if I was in their shoes, and I know who you're talking about, if I was in their shoes, I would drop them. I'd drop Springfield. You may take a cut. I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, they'll definitely take a hit in advertising money. But the truth is, in the long run, until this pans out, you'd be better off. Well, see, here's the thing. This is the ability to say no and without malice. This is a big news story. Yeah. Just fucking run the story. Run the fucking ads. Run their paid fucking, you know, reviews. This is a great gun. Awesome. But you can also, how can you ignore this as a major story? You know, that's what you can do both. You can do both and have integrity and let's let the onus be on Springfield to decide if they want to fucking pull the money. Well, and if Springfield pulls the money, that's another story. That's another story. Hey, because you know what? Springfield was our advertiser. Um, we've done good by Springfield, but this is breaking news in our community and it needs to be said. And um, at the end of the day, they didn't like us telling the truth. So they pulled our money. Look, did Fox News cover Bill O'Reilly leaving Fox News? Yes. Yes. I mean, look, did they lead with it? No. But at some point, it's like, this is a news story. We're going to have to fucking talk about it. Yeah. No, they covered it. Um, that, so, that's a whole That's a whole nother. I know. But I, I, that's I, a whole I, how other. Did, how did, I, how did I slip Bill O'Reilly's dick in this goddamn podcast? Okay. You know what? Hold on. Let's, let's get off this because there's a lot to fucking talk about. Um, did you hear that the ATF has changed? Actually, you did because you sent me something right yes, away. Yes, I you, sent you about the, on it. A, yes. the SIG has, or, or, or um, uh, ATF has apparently uh, 
reversed their decision again on the sig on the on the not the sig brace. I call it the sig brace, but all of these stable stabilizing braces. Yeah, yes. you know uh, more about these than I do because I always I never pay sig- attention to them. Everyone refers to it as a sig brace, whether it's made by sig or not. I mean, it's like Jello and Kleenex, you know. Um, yeah, uh, the ATF is totally did a 180 on it. Um, they're totally fine. They're totally legal. There's no more issues with it. Well, there is apparently, and it was interesting because the ATF, the ATF has come out and said, well, we're not saying this officially, but we're saying it's a gray area that any brace that's longer than 13 and a half inches or 13 and some number may be in violation because of the comfort factor. So they picked out this number. Basically, at some point, they're saying that these stabilizing braces, if they get to be too long, they're still stocks. But they didn't say, they didn't actually say it. They just they didn't actually, it wasn't a hard ruling. It was the possibility in the future, which is, again, an example of how all this is just complete bullshit. Um, at this point, dude, I mean, I hate saying this on a, but, you know, look, dude, but if buy your fucking pistol, fucking guns and stick a god you know, something that's sold as a brace stick it on yes. who gives a fuck how long it is exactly and run with it because yeah, it, it is it, sold as a pistol and the product you stick on there is sold as a brace stick it's it on all there. good yeah you know and you know what and i guess it's because the atf has realized there's so many of these sig braces i'll tell you what it was a couple years ago i'm not going to say anybody's name but this one guy is uh He's not a big, like, douchebag tactical guy, but he is a SWAT guy, a big-time SWAT guy, like high, very, very important SWAT guy. And he was talking about how somebody he knows had shown up with a pistol with a some kind of brace on it, and he was like, this thing is legit, dude. He's like, I mean, he, you know, he he was telling me, you know, again, because I don't want to say his name, because this is, because look, they were obviously shouldering this, yeah. And this guy is a commission, and I don't even want to go there, but he was like, Marky, this shit, this thing's legit. I'm like, really? Yeah, this is legit. This thing is the shit. And I'm like, damn, okay. I just never paid attention to that crap. Well, I mean, it's it's not my thing, um, but, but you know. You know but, you know, now that ATF has actually kind of uh, come out on the uh, whole SIG brace thing, you know, an AR pistol may be, uh, may be a future armory addition here. Well, i tell you, I don't – again, you may want to get an AR pistol. For me, what I would likely do, I'd probably pick up – Something that we don't have, like one of those, I call them the 805s, the Brens. Well, well, I'll or, tell you uh, what, on, honest, no, I, I'll be honest with you. If, if I went that route, I'll tell you what I'd do. I'd, since uh, I've been wanting to play with the Anderson, I'd buy an Anderson pistol and stick a brace on it and kind of like, uh, you know, kill like three birds with one stone. Yeah. Well, you know what? Let me, let me go ahead and say something, a little, a little aside here. Let's, I want to give kudos to SIG. I, you know what? I want to give kudos to SIG USA, not uh, not I, SIG I, Europe. I, hey, I, I, I pray at the SIG altar every day. Yeah, everyone so. that knows, our regulars know that you are a fanboy, so I'm going to go ahead and say this. And nobody out there is saying this, but I'm going to, this needs to be said. And nobody's going to see this coming. There is not a company out there right now that is more cutting edge pushing the boundaries, defending the the rights of the of of the American shooter than SIG. And let me give you let me give some examples. Because they fail, but because they try, sometimes they succeed. The first one SIG did, well no, SIG did the brace. SIG developed this whole idea. SIG basically they got out their pencils and they looked at the law. And, I mean, maybe they got the idea from somebody else, but they're the people that did it, you know, legit yeah. and then made it like this isn't like you're not going to go to prison. And um, yeah. they got it by, and then there was all these arguments, and it, here that's where we are today. SIG did that. SIG did that for all of us. Now, a couple years ago, SIG had come out with this muzzle brake, 
I don't know if they would call it a muzzle brake or a flash suppressor. I think it was a brake. And if you looked at this brake, it was it basically it had if you looked at it, it was a long brake with with angular angular uh I don't want to say baffles because it does they weren't baffles. They were angular deflection panels, you know, for your brake. So you buy a gun with a brake. It's it's a you know the brake's probably about three inches long, and then but their plan was that you could get this, you could buy this gun on the cheap, and then all you have to do is register your tax paperwork, pay the two hundred dollars, and then for like forty bucks, Sig would sell you a sleeve to put over that brake, and I'll bam, you, you instantly have a suppressor. They were they, that was a great idea, and. ATF that came out at Shot Show and it was before Shot was over. I think ATF came out and said that is constructive possession of an NFA item unregistered, and we're not going to let you sell that. We're not going to prove it. We're going to basically say that is a that's a suppressor, even though it's not. It's a yeah. Know. They they took they took it on the chin for that one. But but here's the thing: if you're not constantly trying to come out, I mean, look, now, if, well, if you're being innovative, you're going to take it on the chin every once in a while. Yeah. Now let's let's go to the next big innovation. Let's be. I'm going to give it to him, dude. Straight up here. That Sig. I don't know what the hell they call these guns. Oh, what, the, what the? There's like the little pistol one. And then there's the what's the what's the AR now that Sig makes? It's not the XI. Is it the XI? No. What, is what, do, you, what do What do you mean? What's the gun Sig makes now that doesn't have a buffer tube in? It's an AR pistol. Or it's an AR rifle, but it doesn't have a buffer tube in it. They make. You a, mean like the M400? No. Is it called the, the XI? What the hell's that gun called? Dude, I mean, no, it's like no, the they, gun. The, it's the gun. The size is the five five six. Uh, they they the, make. Uh, they dropped the they they dropped these XI. They dropped these Sig five fifty series guns for this gun. Oh, you're you, okay. You're you're talking about the MPX. The, the okay, yeah, the MPX, and then there's the MP. There's an MP. There's an MP rifle and an MP pistol caliber. Um, but you know whether it's a rifle or pistol, those guns are so. I would say for a mass-produced gun are so innovative. I mean, talk about. I mean, you know, they built like I don't. I don't care for three hundred blackout. They built the one up as a as a three hundred. The, the actual AR was built to be a three hundred blackout. Then they did five five six after, but it's the same case. So it's not like that was a big fucking moonshot. But you know, like the nine millimeter ones they sell with those really well designed mags and like the fucking barrels all come out and like and the freaking four ends slide right off those guns and then you know because there's no buffer tube you can put all these really cool stocks on it. Talk about fucking really pushing the envelope for the American AR shooter. I'm telling you what, I'm not a big SIG fanboy, but if you step back objectively and you look at this, holy shit this company is rocking it. Oh yeah. Oh, and then oh, no, oh fucking the dude, the three twenty. Oh, they got well. the army contract. I fucking forgot about that one. No matter yeah. what happens, they got it. Yeah. It's a monster yeah. company. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, have you seen the the blowback I've gotten on my criticism of Trump at the NRA show? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. God, man, people have been hammering you on that. Yeah. And look, look. As usual, I don't always agree with you on everything. <laughs> um, I, I'm offended by that. But, no, uh, yeah, well, suck it up, cupcake. Um, That's look, butter cup. I, I think you kind of went off the reservation with your, with your Trump at the NRA show. I know where you were going with it, and I don't disagree with you, but I don't agree with you 100%. And, like, the people that were hammering you on it, I mean, like, I kind of agree with half of them, disagree with the other half. I know where you're going with it, and I agree with your general analysis of the situation. But on the other hand, hey, man, you know, he's been president for 100 days, 110 days now, whatever it is. Time will tell. How dare yeah. I say something disparaging about St. Trump? 
That's no, that's hey, the issue. I, well, no, and, I don't. I don't really give a shit that you criticized them for anything. Well, I mean, whatever. Well, it's interesting because the art. The, most of the people that come in and like on the comments, and you see it on YouTube and on our. Y'all you know, think it's been too much on our blog page, uh, Facebook maybe too. It's interesting because what you see, and this is an example of how people literally see what they want to see, not actually read for comprehension or watch for comprehension. Uh-huh, I yeah. never said Donald Trump was anti gun. <laughs> no, I, ne- no. I never said Hillary Clinton was a better alternative. I never said anything nice about. And all these people are coming in and they're making these arguments that literally have nothing to do with what I fucking said. And you oh, can yeah, even yeah. tell these assholes didn't even watch the fucking video. And you can even tell a lot of these assholes they're fans of Trump, but they don't actually watch what he does. And here's for the people at home who don't know what the hell I'm talking about, here's my problem. Trump showed up at the NRA convention. President Trump, I love saying that. I love, dude, I gave money to fucking Trump, so don't give me any bullshit about I'm not on support Trump. Um, but, you know, a, a president, sitting president, showed up at the NRA convention. Great. You know, he he gave the same goddamn speech that he's been giving since January. You know, he talked about all this rambling bullshit. He, the only thing about guns he even remotely mentioned was like hunting and lead hunting ammo on fucking federal lands. I mean, it was it was such a bullshit speech. He should have come to that goddamn convention, and he should have talked about asper. Look, JFK can get at a podium and say, within ten years we're going to have men on the moon. He should be able to say. Within four years, we're going to have national CCW reciprocity. Uh, within four years, we're going to we're going to um, we're going to review the NFA for for you know to make it better for whatever. Within four years, we're gonna we're gonna change you know these. He could have said something aspirational. I, I mean, even, I mean the CCW thing, the national CCW reciprocity is literally there's no there's no cost on talk because that's so common sense. That I mean, and he would have gotten such kudos, and it really makes me question. Because look, let's be real: Donald Trump's not a gun guy. He's a New York businessman. He's not living the gun lifestyle. He's a golf. He plays golf. Yeah, I'm not. When I say that, I'm not saying he's anti-gun. But what it's obvious to me is the political people in his circle don't know shit about guns either. And I can't believe they couldn't take five fucking minutes and talk to their son or their sons or call us. And, you know, say, hey, what, 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 what would be some highlights you would like to see on this speech at the NRA convention? Because this was such a missed opportunity. I literally was like, oh, uh, now, what see, the now, fuck? now, here's the thing. I will agree with you 100% that it was a missed opportunity. Because, look, Trump's core voter base, the people that voted for him, the, the, what was it, 40, 4.1 million people or however many votes he got, the vast majority of them, probably 90% of the people that voted for him are gun owners. They might not be hardcore gun guys, but they're people that have a shotgun or a 22 in their closet. Now, look, I agree it's it was a missed opportunity. He could have done better. He could have really, really worked the crowd because, hey, if you're at the NRA convention working the crowd, I mean, dude, how many NRA conventions have you been to over the years? And I've been to over the years. Look, it doesn't I, take much to work the crowd. I, I mean, made it a point. About guns. Yeah, I, I made it a point. I saw. Actually, I think you saw it, too. Uh, Senator John McCain, when he showed up at the NRA convention looking for everybody's yep. vote. Yeah. And uh, I think maybe I saw. um did uh, Sarah Palin show up too at one of them? Sarah, Sarah Palin showed up in uh, was that Houston or was no, it Louisville? Sarah, no, that Louisville. must have been Louisville because that cause it was she, Louisville, she ran. She ran with McCain. Um, yeah, maybe it was Louisville. Um, but, but you know, but, it's. I mean, he could have talked about the Hearing Protection Act. He could have just said, "Look, I mean, to the people at home that don't understand, or people at home that think I'm an idiot." I understand that Donald Trump cannot pass the Hearing Protection Act on his own, okay? But he, but President Barack Obama was able to say, I don't have the ability to do this, but I have a pen, I have a phone, and I have a podium. Donald Trump 
could have showed up and just said, I think it may be time for Congress to do something about the Air Protection Act, and I will sign it. That's all he had to fucking say. Yeah. I mean, he didn't say anything. I was just crazy. It was a yeah. crazy missed opportunity. And if I ever get a chance to talk to anybody in that group, I'm going to tell them what the hell. Or I want them to explain to me what the hell was going on behind the scenes that they decided that they had to cut their own balls off at the NRA convention. Like, what the hell, what What was the calculus there if they knew these issues? Because yeah. I just, I, I really question, you know, well, like, his, his like staff here. On our Facebook page... Um, and I won't mention a name, but there was a comment on, uh, you know, on the, the post, you know, where you posted the uh, armory chat and, um, the post was simply still better than Clinton. Now let me address that post a little bit here. Yeah. Uh, totally agree. hundred percent. Yeah. Donald Trump is still better than Hillary Clinton, regardless but that's a classic example of a jackass who rolled in, who didn't really watch the video, or if he did, he didn't really pay attention to it. And they're just like, well, you know, I'm a Donald Trump fan, and so am I. Um, but even though he didn't maybe address all these things, it's still better than Hillary. Don't make excuses for the man. He's the president of the United States. And he got our vote by telling us this is what he's going to do. Make America great again. Well, you know what? When you're doing things that, in my opinion, aren't promoting make America great again, then I'm going to hammer you on it. And don't get upset when I hammer the guy on it. Because, look, just because... You know, he's a Republican, whatever. Dude, you know, if, if he doesn't come to bat and if he doesn't produce, then I'm, then I'm going to tell you he doesn't produce and I'm going to hammer him on it. Here is the most common argument that people on our side of the fence made against me. And this is where they're dead wrong and they're going to lose all of our gun rights. And they don't realize it. They're the problem. If you, if this was the argument you made, if you saw my video and you were, and you said what I'm about to say, whether you actually made a comment or you thought it yourself, you're actually the problem. Here's what they said. Donald Trump is president that guarantees that our gun rights are safe <clears throat> for the next four or eight years. Oh, that's not right. <laughs> that doesn't guarantee shit. Well, here's the problem. These people are so disconnected from reality, they don't realize, okay, so we we get somebody in office on our side of the team who's like really on our, supposedly on our side of the team, and we don't actually take back any of the rights that we lost over the previous eight years. So basically, for the next four years or eight years, it's pause, yeah. we're fine, and then a Democrat comes in, then we lose some more rights. Yeah. And then we another Republican comes in, pause, and, you know, look, but over the course of, of 12, 16 years, we've still lost. Dude. We since, haven't gained. Since 80, dude, you and I have seen this. We've seen machine guns go away. We've seen imports go away. We've seen the assault weapons ban, magazine limitations. We've seen, um, we've seen, um, the, the, the 70, you know, the waiting periods. We've seen, oh, yeah. we've seen banning certain types of ammo because they're reclassifying them as armor piercing or bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Cop um, killer you know, and crea all that crap. Creating all these, all these classes of wet, restricted weapons that, that don't exist, you know, and we're to the point now, it's like, it's, it, it's sad. Because it's almost like the kids, the example I gave, like when I when I had a Sebring convertible and some kid rolled up to me and his four-cylinder was like, hey, man, that's got a six-cylinder in it, right? Yeah. He's like, oh, man, I bet that's really fast. And I'm thinking, dude, you have no idea what you're missing. Kid yeah. never saw a muscle car. Kid never yeah. saw a car in the 70s. We got guys today that think machine guns are like atomic weapons. Yeah, I know. It's terrible. But you know what? How many people listening to this podcast that have not been in the military 
have actually fired a machine gun. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, I don't know, I don't know the exact number, but I can tell you the answer, the number is going to be low. But here's the thing. Anyone over 40, 45 years of age who's a gun guy probably has because the truth is in the, in the eighties, in the early nineties, they were pretty plentiful. Yeah, I mean, you still had to jump through hoops to get them, but it wasn't that hard. There wasn't all the bullshit regulations and restrictions you have today. People got machine guns back in the 80s. You know, you had to pay your tax stamp, had to go whatever. But the, the big, the biggest reason people didn't buy machine guns is they were like, man, I don't want to pay that ammo cost. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, Hell, back in the uh, 80s. Why pay I, the $200 tax stamp to have a gun that you're going to fire semi-auto? Yeah, and I that mean, was the attitude. I mean, let's see. I've, I've, I've personally owned, I don't know, three or four machine guns mm-hmm. in the 80s. You know, I mean, they, but, but like, for example, the, the first fully automatic weapon I bought was a Mac 10. Oh, dude, those were everywhere. Dude. I I paid a two hundred dollar tax. You couldn't stamp. give those fuckers away. I paid a two hundred dollar tax stamp for the uh, the right to have a full auto, and I paid two hundred dollars for the Mac Ten. Seriously? Oh, oh yeah, those things. They were I mean, cheap, cheap. That's why they were on all now, the now movies. Now, granted, granted, back in the late eighties, four hundred bucks wasn't nothing to sneeze at. Oh, fuck Not that. like today, but still. I mean, it was affordable. I was reloading because I was shooting competition. Yeah, I was using a 1911 in competition at the time. So, you know, I had a progressive reloader and I, you know, and I was reloading ammo. I didn't shoot it a lot because, well, you know, a Mac 10 will eat up 45 ammo quick. But there, there but, you go. But um, I had a Thompson. Paid a lot of money for the Thompson. But when I sold it, I got a lot of money for it, too. So. I mean, you know, but my, my point is, dude, today, I, know, I know a guy that has a, he has a Thompson that he got in the eighties. He bought it from a, from a PD. He was a cop. Mm-hmm. I think he paid. Now, again, back then it was still some money. This is before the ban. Yeah. I think he paid, what do you pay for the sake? Was it four, six, or eight hundred dollars? It was no more than eight hundred dollars for everything: the gun, drum mags, a case. That gun yeah, the days, that, that gun that, today is worth thirty five thousand dollars. Yeah, I the the Thompson I bought had um, uh, two drums and a stick with it. I paid I think like seven seven hundred and fifty bucks. It was under eight hundred bucks, but it was up there, and it was a lot of money. Don't get me wrong; it was a lot of money at the time. Uh, I'd gladly shell that out today and then some, but you're right. I mean, you know, but, but my point is, even though it was a lot of money back then, it was still affordable. Look, 35 grand today is a lot of fucking money and it's not affordable to the average person. I'll tell you, I have this idea for the NFA, the way to use the current law, the way it's structured, but to, to enable all of us to get to get our machine guns back. Um, again, this is this is this is threading the needle to to solve our problem. Kind of like how the Democrats created assault weapon, um, yeah. you know, because it didn't exist. Well, my answer is that they need to create a CNR license, a CNR version of the cla- of a class three license. <clears throat> so basically, you go through the licensing to get a. Class three C, like a class three collector's license. So it's basically like you're not a museum, but you're not a dealer. So you can get post dealer samples because it's like heritage and history and you're a collector. And, uh, you know, you, it, it's all tracked and you can sell to other collectors. Um, I, I think that would be a good way to, you know, and then the government still supposedly has control of them, and they can and then and then you can have this collector class of post dealer samples that are not well, available to the quote general public. Well, there there are actual machine guns that are on the CNR list that that you can get. I mean, you still got to do the tax stamp, but but you see, the problem is 
they're still stupid money. No, well, I'm, I'm talking. No, no, I'm talking about a new a new category of license. It's like uh, you know, let's we have to make this. This doesn't exist. No gun exists for this. It's a it's a it's a it would be a class three civilian collector historical license that enables you to buy post dealer samples, but you don't ever actually own them. The way you do, they're quote not transferable because at any time, you know, you only can sell them to other dealers, and you know, if you lose your license or something, you know, for the people that really want it, and it would it would help kind of rectify, it would help market forces to correct this problem because what that would also do is that would drop the price on transferable guns to something a little bit more reasonable, but you wouldn't lose your ass on it. Yeah. You know, a transferable uh, Tommy gun may be $12,000. Yeah. Because if you really, really want one and you're a Tommy gun collector, you're just going to go and get the Class 3 collector's license and buy a post dealer sample. I'm telling you what, uh, I, I, yeah. I, 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 I think it's a real good way to kind of to solve this problem. Because this Class 3 NFA stuff, that's – look – the re, you know the ATF changed the rules on the on the on the brace. They changed the rules. Um, you know they're they're talking about the guy came out with the letter. He they want to you know they theory they want to take they want to take the suppressors off the NFA and just move them to the forty four seventy three. And if people don't know what I'm talking about. They want to take mach- the su- su- silencers, so you know what I'm talking about, off of the machine gun list and put them on the regular handgun list because. Here's the problem with the NFA as it's currently functioning. It's unconstitutional. The ATF knows there's such a backlog to get shit through, and the shit is so expensive that this would not pass constitutional scrutiny. If you got the right set of judges just on the economics of this and and, and the logistics of how the current NFA approval process is not functioning – they could you could in theory quote pun intended blow up the NFA in court. ATF knows this. They're not talking about it. But they know it. That's why they're trying to clean this up. Because if they don't, they're going to lose the NFA completely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, All right. I'm gonna get mad, so I'm gonna talk about it. <laughs> um. Do you want to know who the award is? The Darwin Award. Uh. For uh, this week is, um, yeah, let's let's hear it. South African woman gored by rhino while taking pictures. Really, I haven't heard that. Well, here's here's the best part. All right, a photograph shows Chantel Byer, twenty four, and her husband just a few feet away from two white rhinos, which average on average weigh four thousand to five thousand pounds. A few seconds later, and I hate, to, I'm not, I don't mean to laugh, but one of the rhinos attacked the Afrikaans language belled newspaper reporter on, that's a typo, that's a, it, uh, so anyway, the rhino's horn penetrated her chest from behind, causing a collapsed lung and broken ribs. So this rhino, I'm going to send you a picture of this, this rhino gored her from behind and went, went through and through with her chest. I mean, you see how big, this uh, the horn is on this rhino, and how close these people are to this, you're gonna you're gonna freak out. You're gonna be like, "What the hell are these jackasses thinking?" And this is this is an example of how all these city folk, you know, they 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 uh, they watch all these Disney movies and all this Hollywood crap, and they project all of these sympathetic emotions and logic onto these wild animals. I can't believe how close. If my text message got through, I can't believe how close these people are to this rhino. This thing wow. is unreal. Look how close they are to that. Look how yeah, look at that. I'm, I'm I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it right now. You see the one to the right of her, of her left yeah. arm. That's the one that probably ran. That see that big ass horn. That how tall is that horn? Is that Jesus? Three feet that, long? that 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 horn has to be three feet long. That thing, and look how she doesn't look. She's not a big girl. She's probably, I mean, if she's if she's in the average women's height of like five three, five four, or possibly as short as five. If he's a short guy too, she may be 110, 115, 120 pounds at most. Yeah, dude, I don't even know how she's gonna survive this. 
Uh, she probably won't because, I mean, first off, you're in Africa, so you got to worry about the medical uh, care. But but the base of that horn, man, the base of that horn's probably eight inches in diameter. Yeah, I mean, it's just oh, – well, I mean, well, well, check this out. Okay, I mean, okay, look, how, that horn is three inches long. Let me find my list again. That horn is three inches long. Dude, when it gored her, it probably picked her up. It probably oh, yeah. was well, laid across that animal's oh, head. Oh, okay, well, picture this. You're you're real big on uh, looking at uh, matadors who get gored by bulls. You don't know. No, I like bullfighting in general. I'm not a okay. pussy. I'm going to say, oh, I like seeing the matador get it. You know, no, fuck yeah, you guys. Yeah, what, I like what, what, Whatever, whatever. You you love showing pictures of matadors being gored by a bull. Because nobody well, wants to watch a bullfight like I do. Yeah, well, whatever. But this rhino weighs probably three times what one of these bulls weigh. And the horn is on its snout, not off the side of its head. Think oh, about yeah. that. This thing is all. Oh, you know what? I may post this in the comments. This is a new thing we've been doing. If we have content that people are listening to this podcast, and they're like, what the hell are they talking about? Like there's an image. I'll post it in the comment section of – um. Of uh, on John nineteen eleven of this podcast. So if you listen to the podcast on like iTunes or uh, your your music thing, you can't see the pictures. But if you want to listen to it online through a browser, go to our website. Go to the go to the episode sixty one in the comments. Will be this picture. This thing is just. I'll make a little note. But put a pic in, and it's saying, "Oh my god!" I mean, it's just. Oh, I mean, I just get the heebie jeebies looking at that thing. Um, yeah. Hey, I have a I have a new goal. I have a new goal for YouTube. Yeah. Um, cause you know, we're doing a YouTube channel or we're doing the YouTube thing and I don't want, well, I don't, I don't have kids, so I don't have to worry about this. Did you, <laughs> I don't know what the, I don't know who these people are. Heather and Mike Martin are facing child abuse, a uh, child abuse accusations from viewer from after uh, after viewers from posting a controversial prank video on YouTube. So, <laughs> Mike and Heather Martin are under fire for the extreme videos posted to their Daddy 5 YouTube channel. Videos I, I heard about that, but I haven't actually watched any of the videos or read about it, but I heard that I I saw the headline. Well, okay, so I was like, you know, I'm not a big YouTube guy. I mean, I I I get on YouTube for our channel now. And, you know, you you keep me appraised of anything that's going on YouTube. Look, you got us to on the podcast. You got us to on YouTube. You know, you I mean, you pretty soon we're you're going to get us into do, actually broadcasting these these podcasts live with video cuz you're the one that I have to figure out how to do it, but you're the one that pushes it. So, dude, I was reading this and uh Daddy 05, so I was like, okay, I'm going to see what the hell they're talking about. So I went to the <laughs> channel, and like all the videos are gone. Their channel's basically closed. There's like one video up, basically, it's like a hostage video where they're like, we're really sorry, you know, whatever, whatever. Here's, dude, here's the names of these videos Psycho Clown Attacks Family. <laughs> <laughs> dude, tell me you don't want to watch. I, don't no, I want to watch that video. Oh, here, actually. Here's, uh, here, uh, it's not surprising. And this is, uh, here's another one. This is the name of the video. Dad punches kid in the face. Dude, and I you know what? I guess it I, shows extreme pranks. I don't think he really punched his kid in the face, but. But you know what? I want to see him punch his kid in the face because that's the problem with all these freaking millennials out there. Look, all these kids that are under 30, the biggest problem with them, especially like all these protesters out there, none of them have actually been punched in the face. Think about that statement. And I probably – I've made this statement before. A lot of these kids under 30, their whole outlook on life would be a lot different if sometime along the path between the age of, say, 12 and 30, someone actually just punched them in the face. And I'm not talking about slapping them. I'm talking about full fist right to the freaking head. Boom, a good so – I've been hit in the face. I know for a fact you've been punched in the face. <laughs> look, yeah, but look. Back away the, from that one. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, shit happens. You know, I mean, you know, 
you know what? Half, I, half these snowflakes have never actually just been oh, punched in the oh, face. Oh. And I'm not talking about winning or losing a fight. I'm just talking about being punched in the face. Oh, dude, I've got a story to tell you. And this is, a, again, I love the snowflake comment is where the people that listen to us, it's their out. It's their way to say it's the other guy is the problem, not me. I was at a training cycle about 10 years ago. So how old am I now? Am I I'm in my mid forties. Yeah. I was uh mid thirties. Youngster. <laughs> Youngster. And um I'm at this training cycle, and so the guy that's running this training, he's um, you know, accomplished dude. And he you know, he's introducing himself and he's talking about what's gonna happen that day. And he goes, I'm taking a survey, and I've noticed this, and it was it was talking about a shoot no shoot kind of situations. And yeah. he was proving a point. He was basically talking about people that will go to guns too soon and try to shoot their way through problems. He said, by a show of hands, how many people in here were ever in have ever been in a fist fight? And my, my, uh, I think my hand and only one other hand came up. You were taking this course or teaching this course? I was taking this course. Okay. And then gotcha. he goes... He goes, all right, how many people, if you haven't been in a fight, have ever been punched in the face? Raise your hands. Mine was the only hand that ever came up in the entire class. And this was all a bunch of like, you know, these were not snowflakes. But the problem is all of these people, they're like younger than me. They're all, they were all about 10 years younger than me, most of them. They went through schools. And life where if somebody gets into a fist fight, the cops are called. It's a big, it's like a felony or some shit. You know, it used to be that, you know. Oh, wait, first off, we never involved cops. Oh, fuck no. The cops were never involved. Win, lose, or draw, the cops were never involved. And here's the thing. If you lost, you never came back later with a freaking gun either. You took your loss and you went on your way. Well, the point that this particular this particular guy who was running this training cycle was trying to make, he said, "There's too many of there, the younger generation today, and we're not talking like 15 year olds; we're talking 25 year olds." He said, "They're so freaked out by fighting that they that they want to shoot their way. Th- everything is 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 a is a gunfight for them because you know to them, getting punched in the face is a life and death scenario." And he said it's a huge problem that nobody wants to talk about. Yeah. And these well. none of these none of these dudes were snowflakes, but you know what? There were a lot of them that were like, "Oh fuck, dude!" I re- I grew up with a guy. He got in so many. He's my best friend growing up. He was a big fighter. You know, he had short man syndrome. I, I wasn't sure, so I didn't have that problem. But dude, he got into so many fights all the time by accident in the yearbook of his high school yearbook. In the background was a blurry image of him punching somebody, and like just trying to punch him. <laughs> like the fight actually made into the, like one of the one of his fights made in the fucking yearbook, and it was just Look, like Jesus. A- everyone has that friend. <laughs> yeah, think, we all. You know, the thing is, everybody, all of us, we all got to be a little bit older, and we all got tired of getting pulled into fights by him, and we all dropped him. Look, we'd go to a bar and like would be this huge fucking fight because he'd fucking start it. I, I used to throw darts on a team, league, you know, league darts. This is before I was married and I could actually go to the bar. <laughs> 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 um, th- those of you that are married know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, anyway, I was younger, you know, and guy's name was Billy. Now, Billy ran his mouth a lot. It's always Billy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we'd be in a bar. And next thing you know, Billy comes flying across the room. You know, someone would hit him. He would run his mouth, say something. You know, everyone's boozed up. You know, someone would hit him. We'd all jump up. And, and, you know, we'd get in. It'd be a brawl. Well, after the third brawl, (laughs) we're sitting in a bar throwing darts. Yeah, it's normal. We're sitting at the table. You know, next thing you know, Billy comes flying across the freaking room, you know, and uh, everyone jumps up. And I just sat there. They're like, you getting in on this? And I'm like, nope, no, I'm done. 
I'm done. Billy's an idiot, and I'm tired of getting hit in the face because of Billy. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, dude. Yeah. I mean, it was. It was. This oh, and, guy, this and guy by the way, by the way, while we're up there trading punches with these guys, Billy's under the table hiding. He took one hit the whole night, and that was the original hit. It's like fuck that. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously, the the, the one that I'm describing is a Mike, and uh, it was just. I should probably shouldn't say that, but I mean, I mean, I fucking, I mean, it would be goddamn in neighborhood fucking hangouts. It'd be goddamn dance clubs. It would be, I mean, it would be like, I mean, it, 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 at a sporting event, it was it, in parking lots. It was just, it, yeah. it was non. It's like this fucking guy was constantly getting in the fucking fights, and you know, it would he would basically put himself in a situation where quote he was the victim. A bullshit. It's because he's with all of us, you know, a bunch of us. And we all started to figure it out, too, because a bunch of us are martial artists. You know, we're not short, and, you know, we all have black belts. And we started to figure it out. We're like, this motherfucker's using us as air cover. Yeah. And it's, yeah. you know. Yeah, exactly. And it's it was just like, God damn it. I mean, God, it's like, God fucking damn it. I mean, it was. It yeah. gets old. It you gets know, old. It, it gets old. You know, I mean. Hey. You were talking about Narcan and fentanyl and all that <laughs> shit, right? Yeah, I was. <laughs> um, two two <laughs> things. Two. I have an update here. You cough. Hit your hit your mute, dude. Are you, are you choking to death? Yeah, uh, I am. Um, um, you, you mentioned that, and I started laughing. It kind of <laughs> kind of went down the wrong pipe. <laughs> oh, drink some coffee or something. So, okay, all right. I got I got I got I got two things here. Are you there? You know what? We just lost the uh, audio, so uh, we actually just had a power outage over here. So I'm going to probably wrap up. This is uh, episode 61 of the podcast because we're sitting in the dark here at the armory, and uh, we just lost Freeze. So um, I'll say the fentanyl for, uh, for next time. Anyway, everybody, thank you for your time, and have a good day. Okay, so it does look like we did lose our podcast of John 1911, so I guess yours truly must take it over. I am Mitch. I am the sound engineer for John 1911. I thank everybody for listening to our episodes, along with special promotional consideration provided by A&M and Company. And don't forget, it's all about shooting guns and having fun. Join us next week as we begin episode 62 of John 1911. As always, everybody have a good day.